And the results of that were quite shocking. Uh, it showed extreme shortages of PPE, a failure to p- impose controls on borders to prevent the virus arriving in the UK, and also a complete failure in our contact tracing system. Now, what's remarkable is that they 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 seem to have kept this secret because because it was so embarrassing the results, rather than disseminating them across government so the the reforms could be brought in, they. They actually um, kept it secret until October 2021, when they were forced to disclose it through through a legal process. And the the reason they gave for keeping it secret was that it could precipitate an unnecessary heightened public concern that could lead to a loss of public confidence in the government's and the NHS's COVID-19 response. Yeah, every week at this time, we take a look at what's been happening in the COVID inquiry. George Arbuthnot is the investigative journalist of the Sunday Times who's following it for us. Hi, George. Hey, Matt. So, George, probably one of the biggest stories this week has been less about what's happened at the inquiry, but what hasn't happened. And they haven't yet got their hands on Boris Johnson's WhatsApps. You couldn't make it up, could you? I mean, um, he's uh, saying that he cannot remember the PIN number on the phone he was using uh, during the whole COVID period. And uh, this has become kind of farcical. Um, the Bree family say it's a complete joke. Um, Piers Morgan suggested he try the pin pin code B U double L S H I T, and uh, I mean he's he's obviously a serial and storied liar, and uh, this is kind of. Um, no one's believing him on this one. The weird, um, the weird thing is, and I've been trying to follow this, the sort of the the, the conspiracy theories about what Boris Johnson is up to. So first of all, it was that he was refusing to hand them over. Uh, and he said, no, I want to hand them over. It's Rishi Sunak that's want to hand yeah. them over. And then everyone agreed he would hand. And so the, the theory, so it went from he's a cover up. Then he was the victim of a cover up. It's Rishi Sunak was after the cover up. And now he's saying he can't remember the code. I can't work out now who... Who's covering up what? <laughs> well, he's being completely disingenuous, I suppose, because he's got he's got two phones. One he used during the pandemic up until May 2021, when it was realised that his phone number was already in the, in uh, online, and therefore he had to change phones. And so that the the messages he's been offering to the inquiry are the ones after May 2021, in his, on his new phone, but they're kind of fairly useless because the pandemic was 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 kind of on its way out at that point. So he's been trumpeting the fact he's happy to hand those over, even though they're not the ones that would actually be useful to the inquiry. Um, and obviously, you know, he's allegedly said things during during the pandemic like, let the bodies pile high. And and those kind of messages would be on his old phone, which he's uh, conveniently says he's forgotten the passcode to. Yeah, and lots of people have uh, drawn the similarities to the phone that disappeared off a boat in the... Uh... Uh, Wagatha Christie uh, case as well. Uh, Let's talk then about what's actually happened at the inquiry uh, this week rather than what hasn't happened. Mark Lloyd, the chief executive of the UK's local government association, was giving evidence. He said that uh, even councils across the country were kept in the dark about important findings and that impacted their ability to keep people in their areas safe. Didn't become aware of the exercise having (laughs) taken place nor its conclusions until the report became known through the work of this inquiry. Why it matters, uh, having now retrospectively seen that work, it was the first time when issues like quarantine featured in planning. It would have changed what we were doing in our local planning to have knowledge of that kind of intent should we experience a pandemic of those strains. To answer your question is yes, there is an approach to secrecy around the conclusions. And that's obviously talked about the sort of the planning and the exercises that were done before. But even uh, the Northern Ireland Assembly, which, you know, isn't local government, but is a devolved government, they said they were kept in the dark. This is Michelle O'Neill, uh, uh, who w- was or has been Northern Ireland's former health minister. Whenever Operation Cygnus occurred, I would have expected through the passage of time to receive the feedback and the report and the evaluation. Unfortunately, before the formal report came, I was out of office. And even before any informal report came in, I, I don't ever recall ever receiving even an informal report from my own officials as to the effectiveness of the operation. And then Michael Gove, now the levelling up secretary, of course, he was the uh, uh, the cabinet office minister, was sort of cross government role uh, during much of the pandemic. He was asked if there was a culture of secrecy from national government when it came to sharing what they knew with local government. 
Yes, is the short answer. Not every arm of government, and I think this is true across administrations, Conservative, Coalition and Labour, has been as open, trusting and collaborative with local government as it should be. I think that that is part of politics. So, um, George, to what what diff? I suppose that it's it's not great if people felt they should have known things but didn't. I suppose what the inquiry's got to try to get to the bottom of is the extent to which that had any material impact on how things unfolded. Yeah. So th- th- this is this is quite extraordinary. This because before in in 2016, the government did actually hold a practice rehearsal for a coronavirus pandemic, and. The results of that were quite shocking. Uh, It showed extreme shortages of PPE, a failure to impose controls on borders to prevent the virus arriving in the UK, and also complete failure in our contact tracing system. Now, what's remarkable is that they they seem to have kept this secret because, because it was so embarrassing, the results, rather than disseminating them across government so the, the reforms could be brought in. They... They actually um, kept it secret until October 2021, when they were forced to disclose it through through a legal process. And the, the reason they gave for keeping it secret was that it could precipitate an unnecessary heightened public concern that could lead to a loss of public confidence in the government's and the NHS's COVID-19 response. And so what, what the problem of this is, is that they, prior to the pandemic, if they'd known about all this across local government in Northern Ireland and the devolved administrations, they could have brought in improved contact tracing reforms. They could have planned to bring in border controls that would pre- would have stopped or pre- or slowed the virus's entry into the UK. And they could have also boosted their PPE stocks, which was which was so so short when the when the pandemic arrived. Um, and wh- where will the uh, inquiry go next? Who who's up next week, George? So this uh, the next week is the last week of the first part of the inquiry, which is pandemic preparedness. And uh, on Tuesday, the final witnesses will be heard, which will be the Breed family representatives from England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And given the evidence that has emerged um, in recent weeks of the fact that these failures in Britain's pandemic preparedness were covered up, I think that their, their evidence sessions could be, could be quite ex- explosive. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. But luckily, you're keeping an eye on it for us. And uh, we'll catch up with you same time next week. George Arbuthnot, thank you for that. Deputy editor of the Sunday Times Insight team, keeping us across everything that's happening at the COVID inquiry.